So in this last session, I'm going to kind of bring it all together. I've been helping you really think about where are you, what are the traits of successful and non-successful businesses, what are your differences, what is your purpose for being in the family business. But you know what? All of that now comes down to conversations. We're linguistic beings. So at the end of the day, you took all that information for the first several videos, and now you have to work with it. you got to talk to each other. And that's difficult. I've identified 10 things you need to practice to have what I call conversations for success. So in this particular session, we're going to really look at the conversation for success formula and have you work with that. So you're going to take all the other information from the other sessions and start working with it. Let's go through. I'm going to talk about each of these things that I think you need to do. I'll read them and then we'll talk about it just for a minute. The first one is learn to shut up and really listen and be generous with your time and be patient. Look, at the end of the day, we're terrible listeners and we're even worse with our family because, you know, every time my mom talks, oh, I've heard her talk a certain way, so you really need to learn to shut up and really listen in what I call with generosity and curiosity. So a lot of people just can't shut up. First of all, take that on. Secondly, be generous. That's a gift you're giving to people, really learning to listen to them. And then with curiosity. So when they tell you things that are just like, wow, be curious. What does that mean to them? Why is that important to them? The next one is learn how to ask good questions with curiosity and an open mind. So again, if part of the premise of this is that we got to learn how to get along. You got to learn to ask good questions. So when people say things to you, when they tell you they want things a certain way, your mission, should you accept it, is to ask good questions. Tell me more about that. Why is that important to you? How did you come up with that? How do you think that will work in the long run? Really learning to ask good questions is such an important skill. The next one is to learn to manage your own emotional reactivity. Take a quick break if needed, but get back to the dialogue in a reasonably short time. Never pout or brood. So emotional reactivity is a really big deal in the family because the way people talk to me, that's where all the family history comes up. Look, my 83-year-old mother said something to me last week and it just hit me. I was like, oh my gosh, I did something wrong. And I was like, wait a sec. She's 83 years old. I'm 50 something. I'm not a little kid anymore. I got to sort that out. So learning to manage your own emotional reactivity. And then the other thing that trips families up a lot is they blow up, go away, don't come back to the conversation. So if you get a bit overrun with your emotions, take a couple breaths, ask for a timeout, come back to the table, like in 10 minutes, not 10 days, 10 weeks, you really need to learn how to do this. So I was in a conference recently and the brain scientists were talking about this and they said that, you know, when you, you have the primitive part of your brain, the amygdala, and the more that's reacting, the stronger that gets, and the more higher functioning part of your brain, the more you work with that, the stronger that gets. So you really have to keep building your ability to calmly, rationally discuss things. The next one is to learn to have a calm, clear, spacious mind rather than preparing your answer as the other person speaks. Take a minute to think as you learn the value of creating moments of silence in the dialogue. So you really need to learn to just keep a calm, spacious mind. How often, and you know, how often do we talk to people? And as they're talking, you're, you know, developing your next response, your argument. Just learn to try to create a spacious, open mind. It'll make a really big difference in terms of accessing your own creativity and working with others. Learn to see the other person's viewpoint as legitimate, even when it doesn't make sense to you or your worldview. This is one of the big ones. I mean, I know with my uncle, I know with other people, I know with people in my own family. It's like they tell you certain things and you're like, hmm. But the more you can see it as legitimate, it's legitimate to them. Um, it will really make a big difference in terms of you beginning to appreciate each other and find common ground. 
The next one is learn to be succinct and resist endless debate or going over it one more time. Try to find win-win. I guess I should be pretty succinct about that. You get the idea. Some people go over and over and over again and again and again. Debate back and forth. Be succinct. Find win-win. Take responsibility for creating a persuasive, well-thought-out case for your idea and accept it and move on if others don't accept your idea. It's not personal. So at the end of the day, in business, in life, we have to create persuasive arguments. If you, you know, you come to me, some people in the family business come to me and they're like, they haven't taken my last eight ideas. And I say, well, tell me about your idea. And they're not very persuasive. They haven't thought it through. You're not gonna move your ideas forward. Take responsibility for having a persuasive argument. And if it doesn't go your way, Get over it. It's business. It's not personal. Learn to be more persuasive. Build those skills. Learn to be respectful, play nice, and get along with others even when you have significant differences of opinions or different styles. Assume best intent in others. Look, be respectful, play nice, assume best intent. It'll make such a difference in terms of the debate, how you get along with others. It'll make all the difference in the world. Be responsible for fostering a cooperative, supportive teamwork environment, or find another team, or find an occupation where you can succeed as a lone ranger. Look, most businesses are made up of teams, and if you can't learn to play nice and be on a team, maybe you should go get a job as a lone ranger. It's fine, don't make your life miserable, and don't make the lives of others miserable. Learn to get along and be a good team member. Lastly, find some peace, happiness, and fun in your life. Life is short. I think that one's pretty self-explanatory. Life's short, man. If you can't find some happiness in your life, in your family business, you need to do that. So here are your reflection questions. Look at all of the things in the conversation for success formula and pick one or two that are the areas for you to work on. And then get into the conversations with your family. This is gonna be an ongoing practice. So I've got a couple challenges for you. Challenge number one is send me an email and tell me about your particular areas to work on or your families and I'll send you a little advice based upon all the families I've worked with. And then secondly, send me an email and tell me which areas you're gonna work on, what you're going to do about it and by when and it'll help me hold you accountable. Remember, that's an important part of the coaching process. Thank you for sitting in on these videos. I'm looking forward to interacting with you in the community, and you'll be getting other videos and invited to other events, and I really wanna help you move your family business forward. Play to your potential.